Western New York State, the best of American bowlers meet in the World's Championship Tournament. 35,000 experts in the bowling art are present. And here we go for a ride, right down the alley with the ball. It's a strike, and here's how you got that ride. The barefoot cameraman has a pusher camera, an invention of his own. All he asks is a bit of head start on that fast rolling ball. And here's the result. The competition lasts three months as top bowlers compete for the top prizes. Bombay is the scene of a fabulous oriental custom. With his wife, the Aga Khan, spiritual leader of all Ismaili Muslims, studies plans of the scales in which his weight will be matched in diamonds. In Brayburn Stadium, 60,000 followers gather, and diamonds arrive by the sackful for the ceremony. It celebrates the Aga Khan's Diamond Jubilee. <laughs> Visitors from all over the Muslim world have made the pilgrimage to Bombay to pay homage to the man who is the living symbol of their deity. Now the 68-year-old leader, resplendent in a silver brocaded tunic, arrives. Others, including himself, have seen their weight balanced with gold. But today, on this specially constructed scale, the Aga Khan becomes the first to match his weight in precious jewels. The diamonds, gift of the faithful, are placed in the balance. His French wife watches as the precious weight mounts. Finally, the scales balance at 243 and a half pounds, the equivalent of more than $2 million. The Aga Khan will keep only one stone as a memento. The others will be sold and the money used for relief and rehabilitation among his people. In the vast Pacific Ocean, a pinpoint on the horizon, lies the world's newest island, created by an underwater volcanic eruption. The little patch of black rock, the growth of which is accompanied by great blasts of smoke and sulfurous steam, lies 230 miles south of Tokyo. The heat from the submarine eruption boils the ocean's water into great clouds of steam. The new island is already 80 feet high and still growing, roiling the Pacific's muddy floor and discoloring the surface. But scientists expect the eruption to spend itself, and the new island may slip back underneath the sea. In the state of Colorado, part of America's majestic west, is the world's highest observatory. Here, 11,500 feet above sea level, Dr. Walter Roberts and his wife ski to their unique job of probing the cosmic unknown. In this Harvard College Observatory, Dr. Roberts studies the sun's surface with the aid of a coronagraph, one of three in the world. The coronagraph, which simulates an eclipse of the sun, makes visible the sun's edges, which are normally unobservable. Through its use, the quality of radio reception, greatly affected by sun disturbances, can be forecast. Unusual motion pictures photographed through the coronagraph show the violent motion of tremendous solar upheavals. Scarlet-hued clouds of burning gases rise to a height of 100,000 miles. Scientists work to unravel the mystery of the sun and its influence upon mankind. With Mrs. Roosevelt, private citizen Winston Churchill visits the grave of Franklin Delano Roosevelt at Hyde Park. A final salute to a fellow worker from an old friend.
Roosevelt and Churchill in their first spectacular meeting laid the foundations of the Atlantic Charter in face-to-face -face statesmanship. Throughout a series of conferences that stirred the hearts of all people, these two men, joined by Joseph Stalin, helped to map the final campaigns of the war and laid the plans for peace through the United Nations organization. Their warm friendship was ended by the death a year ago of Franklin Roosevelt. Winston Churchill, his colleague, now pays his last respect. In the wilds of the western state of Washington, the dogs are eager for the chase, and the cougar, or mountain lion, is hunted across the heavy snow. The starling cat seeks to elude his pursuers by taking to the trees. The dogs have him treed and the hunter climbs to take the mountain lion alive. With a noose on the end of a pole, the hunter slips the rope around the beast. The cougar is pulled from his haven and tumbled to the ground. full of fight. Expert hands tie those sharp and ready claws. Mountain lions here are a pest, preying on domestic and game animals. This one is headed for the zoo and the easy life. From Italy comes this film report on the activities of UNRWA, United Nations group charged with the relief of the needy. Bread for the hungry children to eke out the local harvests reduced by drought. Soup for the children brings a happy demonstration. Food for the needy has highest priority in the devastated areas. In the United States, cattle are driven to a port for shipment overseas. 200,000 head are earmarked to help rebuild the destroyed and scattered herds of Europe and Asia. Americans will reduce their diets to meet the overseas demand. The cattle are loaded aboard ship with the blessings of the church. At the same port, a thundering herd of horses wearing the brand of the United States. These are the first of some 300,000 which will be shipped abroad to help work the farms in war-torn areas. The horses are boxed and lifted into the holds of freighters. Each ship can carry a thousand horses. And as Americans push their surplus to the port areas, they are asked to make more sacrifices, to cut down on food consumption by at least one fourth. Former President Herbert Hoover, at the request of President Truman, assumes the role he played after the last war, chairman of the Emergency Famine Commission. He is on his way overseas to survey the situation. 27 years ago, he left on a similar mission for President Woodrow Wilson. Today, he carries America's pledge of aid to the needy of the world.